Hello, everyone, and welcome back to ChurchMilton.tv's Miked Up show, coming to you here from the uh, Archdiocese of Detroit's uh, turf, uh, although not very welcome in the Archdiocese of Detroit proper, but hey, we're here, and we're Catholics, and you know what, we're allowed to say whatever we want to say because it needs to be said. And speaking of needing to be said, I'd like to introduce to you Judy Brown, the uh, founder, the, the, the everything of the American Life League. Judy, how are you? Oh, I'm fabulous. Thank you. But I can't take all the credit. There were 10 of us. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. Very, very humble. Humble is in these days. So uh, very good of you to say so. Uh, Judy is the uh, uh, obviously the president and co-founder. Uh, she's she's known all over the country, all over the world. Uh, she's an author, a syndicated columnist, has, uh, you know, fought for uh, the the rights of the unborn uh, tirelessly, absolutely, absolutely beautifully uh with all her heart and uh has been a great inspiration for many many people uh unfortunately one of the groups that uh judy brown has fought against is uh, much of the establishment of the church in the united states now this article uh that came out here we're going to pop it up on the screen for you this article with uh uh from the catholic news service which judy if i'm right isn't that the bishops the usccb's news service no, actually, that was the conservative news service. <laughs> oh, all right. you know, I was sitting there going, okay, got it. <laughs> so I looked at that and said, well, the CNS, that's a little odd, isn't it? <laughs> so, well, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the correction. I'll take it. Um, sure. So uh, anyway, so the CNS, the conservative news service, uh, goes around and uh, and starts interviewing a number of people. I actually got a phone call also from the uh, the uh, author, the reporter, Barbara Hollingsworth, very lovely lady. Uh, and she interviewed uh, uh, Judy, me, Brent Bozell, Chris Mannion. I, uh, you know, uh, I'll throw myself in there because I was in the list, but the three of those folks, wonderful, wonderful, uh, longtime advocates for the truth and Catholic right and might and everything else. And Judy, I'm going to read to you something you said, <laughs> something that you were quoted in, and it says, uh, where are we here? Um, uh, Dolan is a media darling. They promote him as the preeminent Catholic speaker in the United States because they know what he's saying suits their agenda, not what the church teaches. And I'm, we're going to play a little clip right now, the clip designed for you in this part of the show. Uh, clip number three, guys, uh, talking about uh, uh, from the Meet the Press interview where he talks about uh, how the bishops in the church would be cheerleaders for Obama if it weren't for this one particular part of Obamacare. Play the clip, guys. We bishops have been really kind of in a tough place because we're far universal, comprehensive, life-affirming health care. We, the bishops of the United States, do you, can you believe it? In 1919, came out for more affordable, more comprehensive, more universal health care. That's how far back we go in this battle, okay? So we're not Johnny Come Latelys. We've been asking for reform in health care for a long time. So we were kind of an early supporter in this. Where we got, where we started bristling and saying, uh oh, first of all, this isn't comprehensive. Mm -hmm because it's excluding the undocumented immigrant and it's, it's excluding the unborn baby. So we began to bristle at that. And then secondly, we said, and wait a minute, we who are pretty, we Catholics who are kind of among the pros when it comes to providing health care, do it because of our religious conviction and because of the dictates of our conscience. And now we're being asked to violate some of those. So that's when we began to worry and draw back and say, Mr. President, please, you're really kind of... Uh, you're really kind of pushing aside some of your greatest supporters here. We want to be with you. We want to be strong. And if you keep doing this, we're not going to be able to, to be one of your cheerleaders. You and that, sadly, is what happened. Judy, the line quoted for you about that in the CNS article says, quote, how dare he say that Catholics should be cheerleaders of Obamacare? He's a pathetic example of a shepherd of the Catholic Church. What say you, Ms. Brown? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will repeat that again, if you wish. And the problem with Cardinal Dolan is quite simply his politics. He is a dyed-in-the-wool dyed Democrat, an Irish Democrat. And, but he, his calling in the church as a cardinal, as a bishop, as a priest, is to imitate Christ on earth, not emulate the principles of the Democratic Party. And unfortunately, what he's done in this interview and so many other interviews over the course of his reign in the Archdiocese of New York is 
insult the church, if you will, because he'd rather be the media darling of the major networks than be the teacher and preacher of the good news of Jesus Christ. And I say that with all humility, because my closest friend in the entire world in the hierarchy when he was alive was Cardinal John, John Cardinal O'Connor. Wonderful man. I knew him personally. Uh, well, then you know exactly what I'm saying. And Cardinal O'Connor would never have perceived himself as giving interviews on Meet the Press and other, or in fact, he would have turned them down because he was too busy teaching and preaching. He's the one bishop at the time that the, the catechism came out who gave homilies for an entire year so that he covered every aspect of the catechism with his flock. Not so with this current cardinal in New York. Cardinal Dolan is just, uh, I, I mean, it's unforgivable what he said because when you watch, watch Meet the Press and you listen to Cardinal Dolan, the average human being who is watching that interview honestly believes that there's absolutely nothing wrong with Barack Obama, that the, that the Cardinal only wishes that he'd change his mind on religious liberty and everything would be fine. And of course, we all know that Obama is the godfather of the abortion movement in this country now. Contraception, Planned Parenthood, euthanasia, you name it. He's exporting it all over the world, all of the foreign aid. When you know right. all this money goes to these different disasters, and all, he, they, they immediately go, well, you'd said no to us before, but now before we help you, we're going to tie our money to you accepting abortion, contraception, or they're doing it in Haiti, in the Philippines, Africa, everywhere. Well, you know... <laughs> When I wrote my book, The Broken Path, uh, which is about the bishops and their, their tragic involvement in American politics, I actually sent the cardinal a copy of it and asked him, I invited him, as I did every other bishop, to read the book. Not because I have a, I have a, a, a desire to criticize the bishops, but because I have a desire for Catholics to understand that the reason that the pro-life movement has been stuck in the mud for 40 years is the bishops. If the bishops actually raised their voice against the killing of the innocent, abortion would be no more in this country. You know, it's, 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 it's funny, Judy, if you go down the USCCB, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops website, if you go down that website and you look at all the different press releases and things like that, if you were just kind of keeping a little tally sheet on the side and you drew, drew it into, you know, two columns, you know, pro-life, you know, anti-abortion, anti-contraception, whatever, a column. And then over here, you had immigration. You'd run out of ink putting check marks into the, into the comments and press releases about immigration. It, it, I, you know, <laughs> how do you say this any clearer? People do not go to hell for their stances on immigration. That's right. <laughs> Nor do they go to hell for their stances on capital punishment. Right. But they do go to hell for killing babies yeah. and destroying the souls of teenagers. And this is what... We would like the cardinals and the bishops and the priests of the Catholic Church to teach in the, to the people in the pew instead of politicizing the church. And, you know, the saddest part about all of this at the end of the day, Michael, is it is not indicative of just Cardinal Dolan. No. The Catholic Church throughout the country has been in the pocket of the federal government taking money for their various activities for a very long time. Yep. And, the, and this is just a result of it. The Cardinal Dolan's position on Obamacare is a result of being more political than more Catholic on the part of far too many bishops. And I have to say, I know some very heroic bishops. Yes, there, very, there are some very, you know, and, and I think we need to give kudos. We, we try to do it almost every show. But I yeah. have to tell you, uh, Bishop Thomas John Paprocki in Springfield, Illinois. Yes. God love that man. God love everybody. Right. But, yes. you know, God loves some people more than others. He certainly does. I, I'm, I'm sure that he loves his blessed mother more than he loves me. God loves some people more than he loves others, and I know that's a very horrible thing to say, and will send people scurrying to, you know, in religious encyclopedias left and right and everything else, but the reason he loves them more is because he sees more of himself in them. And well, that, Yes, we are all given the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And choose not to use them. That's right. And Bishop Pabraki in, in Springfield, Illinois. I mean, that the uh, everything re uh, regarding the exorcism that he, uh, the exorcism prayers and service he had in his cathedral when the Catholic governor of Illinois uh, yep. signed gay, gay marriage, same sex marriage, whatever the diabolical thing is, uh, signed that in. So bishops, like, where are, why are we counting two, three, four of those bishops among three or four hundred and the others sit on the air and say what they want to say? It's, 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 it's beyond the pale. It's beyond the pale. Yes, but it's the reason that the Catholic Church is losing so many uh, members. 
It's the reason why 92% of those who claim to be Catholic favor abortion, favor choice, favor contraception, favor Obamacare. And I, it's because they are not educated. And the reason why they're not educated and catechized properly rests at the feet of those ordained into the priesthood who are responsible for teaching and feeding the flock. And they're not doing it. I, I think we have to make clear here, Judy, because obviously you and I are on the same page as this, as along with many other faithful Catholics who are greatly disturbed at this. But I think we need to make this very, very clear. Uh, we don't want Cardinal Dolan going to hell. We don't oh want God. other American bishops going to hell. We want these princes of the church, these shepherds of the church, to finally stand up, throw off all the chum of the world, to quote the cardinal himself, and stand up and be the God-centered, Christ-like leaders of the church so we can begin to fight this culture back in one single blow. And I don't think, I really, honest to God, don't think after speaking with various bishops all over the world, it's a horrible thing to think, and I'd like your reaction to this, that, that so many of these leaders simply certainly don't appear to any longer have supernatural faith. They simply don't believe. Well, you, you've said it, and I heard this years ago in the 1980s from the then spiritual director of American Life League because we were agonizing at the time about pro-abortion Catholics advocating for abortion, even before we, we began the Canon 915 campaign. And he came back from a meeting in the Vatican. He was very close to Pope John Paul II and to Mother Teresa. And he said that the problem with the bishops who, who claim that they don't have to have a position, they don't have to preach on abortion every Sunday, which is one of the things Dolan said he rarely ever taught on, is that they don't have faith in the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And once that disappears, none of the other teachings of the church make sense. And so they don't teach, but they don't teach because they don't believe. And I'm afraid that, he, that that is the correct analysis of our current day situation in most of the situations that the bishops are involved in, not all. And I have to say that I wish that they'd s spend as much time talking about the alienated child in the womb whose civil rights are violated every 30 seconds and less time talking about immigration, which is going, it's a political problem. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it, and it's not Absolutely. being handled correctly. But nobody's being directly murdered, and babies are dying. Yeah, by the thousands every day. And bishops are looking on, and I think that is a sign of what you've found in your discussions with bishops, what Father O'Brien told us, and it absolutely has to change before anything else changes. I think there is a, somebody had gone so far as to, uh, uh, suggest, and you know, I, 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 I'd have a hard time mustering an argument against that what is happening to the church right now actually should not be viewed any longer as just sort of the passive will of God, like, you know, things happen and God allows them to happen. But in particular with his church, God is actually willing, actively willing that this purification happen in the church. Think about, how, you know, you get the leaders you deserve. It happened to Israel, to the Jews in the Old Testament. It has happened from time to time here. You think about, look how easily the church fell apart in England during the time of the Reformation. And when the push came to the shove, one bishop out of 36 stood up and said, no, I'm for Christ in the church, had his head lopped off, and the others just, you know, went their way. And, uh, you know, yeah, St. John Eudes said the surest sign of God's punishment on his people is that he installs bad shepherds over them. And how can you sit here? How can anyone sit here and say that these sorts of continual gyrations and, you know, whole linking arms with Obama and smiling and laughing with the whole thing is rotten. It stinks to the core. And I think you nailed it, Judy. I think it is exactly because they don't have the supernatural faith in the real presence anymore. That's why they can distribute Holy Communion to Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and make up excuses that, oh, it's not Canon 915, it's Canon 916. Wrong. That applies the Supreme Jurist in the Church. Cardinal Burke has cold said, no, you are wrong, cardinals and bishops. 915 applies, and they must be denied Holy Communion. Why don't they care about not denying them Holy Communion? Because you got to say, hmm, do these guys really believe that's Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity? Because if it is, it sure is a weird way to treat it. 
Well, you know, um, Pope Benedict, prior to his resignation, said in one of his uh, Wednesday homilies that there would come a time when the church would be thinned out, it would become much smaller, it would be, but it would be, at the same time would become much more faithful and much more devout, much more prayerful, and then we would see a dramatic change in the church, and only then. And so I think you're absolutely right, Michael. I cannot argue with a th single word you've said. I think it is diabolical. I think the devil's having a field day right now in the church, and it's my hope and prayer that he gets cut off at the knees real soon. Yeah, and of course that is up to all of us. We must pray for these bishops. We must pray, obviously, for the Holy Father, pray for the good of the church. I mean, this is these are frightening times. The diabolical is raging all around us, and we, you know, I mean, Bishop Thomas Olmsted in Phoenix this past weekend, I think it was, or a few days ago, uh, God bless him. What a great bishop. He came out and said, it is in the talking about these tough things, these hot button issues that Cardinal Dolan hasn't preached about for 37 years. It is in the very preaching of these things that you are doing evangelization because this is what you go to hell for. Why can't they get that? <laughs> They can't even mention the word, Michael. Oh, I know, I know, I know. They elevate priests all over the place. You know that, well, we have a reasonable hope that everyone is saved. Ridiculous. Jesus Christ didn't say that. He said the exact opposite. So, no, there is no reasonable hope that everyone goes to heaven. What a ridiculous, stupid thing to maintain. Judy, I'm going out of my mind. i got to go to a commercial break. I'm going to have a vein pop. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Judy Brown from American Life League. One, uh, can I say one really swell lady? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Judy. Uh, everybody, we come back. We're going to be talking to Dr. Jerry Nadal. He posted a blog on this, uh, uh, posting on his blog about uh, uh, this uh, Meet the Press interview uh, where Cardinal Dolan talks kind of like a corporate, sort of like a chief executive officer, a CEO, saying we got out-marketed when it came to the same-sex marriage issue. Out-marketed? We'll be right back with Dr. Jerry Nadell right after this. This season, the, the series of 13 uh, episodes, programs, will be concerned with uh, the principles and uh, advantages that we derive from St. Thomas Aquinas and the Summa Theologica. Why is it useful for people to uh, look at this because, not because there's anything original that Mike Forrest and I are doing, we're just retailing. And what we're doing is retailing the truth about creation, about the human person, about God, and about morality and how you form moral judgments as we find them in the magisterium of the teachings of the Catholic Church, and especially as we find them in the teachings of Thomas Aquinas. And the church has incorporated Aquinas into its teaching of Christ. And it's, so much of this is, is lacking today. Uh, and uh, that's what we're trying to do, is to uh, lay it out in a short and simple format so that you can, uh, you can think about it and pray about it.